All right, in this video, we are going to talk about factoring a little bit. And then in the next video, which will be the last for this day, we will apply it um, with uh, trigonometry involved. So in Math 103, you learn two important ways of factoring um, polynomial equations. It's called factoring by grouping and factoring trinomials by splitting the middle term. If you took 103 with me, we also looked at an area analogy method for factoring. Uh, let's, um, let's just jump into examples because you've already seen this before. The first one, there are four terms. Um, so I'm going to try to factor by groups. So between x, y and 2x squared, I can factor out 1x and I'm left with y plus 2x. You can verify if you FOIL x times y gives you xy and x times 2x gives you 2x squared. <clears throat> Between the next two terms, factor out a y square, you get y plus 2x equals 0. Now you have two terms, and in both the terms you have a y plus 2x that is common. So you can factor that out, and you're left with x plus y squared. Now when you have product of two things equal to 0, you need to have one of them equal to 0. So that's going to be your solution and that's going to be your factoring. That is called factoring by grouping. The second one is a um, trinomial. For trinomial we have a process that we follow. <coughs> So we are going to split the middle term such that the product equals 2 times negative 3 and the sum equals this coefficient which is 5. Now we list down the ways in which I can get a product of negative 6. Negative 1, 6, negative 2, 3, 2, negative 3, 6, negative 1. And then I add these. That gives me a 5, a 1, negative 1. Oh, that's the same. Negative 5. I want the sum to be 5, which means that's the one that's going to work. Now, once I split, it becomes a problem of factoring by grouping. Because I can group an x here to get 2x minus 1 and I can group a 3 to get 2x minus 1 both of which have a 2x minus 1 common so this gives me 2x minus 1 x plus 3 equals 0 giving me 2x minus 1 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0 or x equals 1 half and x equals negative 3 So as before, whenever you have a squaring type of stuff involved, um, you can expect there to be two answers. Then um, we have some generalized cases which you can solve by substitution. Let's revise that. So here, this is not quadratic, meaning the power is not two, the power is four. But you can substitute u equals x squared to make this equation u squared minus 7u plus 12 equals 0. And then you look at how can you get a product of 12. So you have 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. And you can stop there because 3 plus 4 is 7. This means this is going to factor as u minus 3, u minus 4. So you get u is 3 and then you get u is 4. But it's not yet complete because what is u? u is x squared. So this actually gives you x squared is 3, giving you two answers, plus minus root 3. And this gives you x squared is 4, giving you two more answers, plus minus 2. So there are four solutions. Which makes sense because the degree of this polynomial is 4. Another example. Now it's not even a polynomial, you know, because it's negative exponent, meaning it's actually one over x squared. 
But I can do the same thing. I can let u equals x to the negative 1 and this becomes u squared plus u minus 12. Now I need two numbers whose sum is 1 and product is negative 12. I'm going to use negative 3 and positive 4. So this is going to be u plus 3 and u minus no, u minus 3 and u plus 4. That gives me u is 3 and u is negative 4. But what is u? u is 1 over x. So x is 1 thirds and x is negative 1 fourth. So two solutions in this case. The takeaway here is you can have quadratic equations, you can have um, things that are seemingly more complicated, but if you observe a pattern and make a relevant substitution, you can break it down into a trinomial which you already know how to factor. And then when you solve that trinomial, whatever number of solutions you get, you can plug your substitution back and find the actual variable that you're looking for which in both of these cases was x. So we're going to use this technique um, in the next video when trigonometric identities, sorry, trigonometric ratios are involved. That's it for this video.